excited to have the fabulous Amanda Holman close this out for today. And Amanda um, was joined my team during the pandemic and became a sales director. And I knew, I knew the moment within two weeks of recruiting her, I knew, and I said this to her, I said, would you ever do what I do? She goes, no. I mean, it was like a hell no. Have a little moment here. Never. Okay. But I knew, I knew that she was like a director person, like she has director material. And so I'm so excited to have her close this out and just leave you some inspiration. And then, like I said, we'll do that photo over or after. So come on over, Amanda. Hi guys. So I want to take you back really quick. Um, I'm going to expire the crap out of you, I promise, but just hang on, hang with me, okay? Okay, so it's easy for me to stand up here and say that no means next or just do it. Like what's holding you back, right? So fear, rejection, actually even hating can hold people back. Um, and so it's, so it's really easy for me to say, just do it. You, we know what to do. Or when you get off the meeting like I do on Mondays, and I hate that it ends at 9 o'clock because I'm ready to start cooking and calling because I'm so excited. Or even leaving here. You're, you're so you're, you're excited about something that you've learned or at seminar. I've literally wanted to leave seminar. And actually one time <laughs> Emily came down to do Honoring Working Women with me. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, please, just, will you leave? And it was my very first time doing Honoring Work Women. And so she looked over at me. She's like, so what do you want to do? I mean, I'm like, if you could just go home, I need to call these leads. Like, it was so exciting. And she was like, I won't say for that. I'm so okay. Okay, so I've seen um, everyone right 100 miles an hour with your hands and um, it just take away. So how do you keep... Um, that passion, which thank you for destroying the word passion for me after this. Um, so how do you keep your passion that you have right this second um, and keep that mindset? That as soon as I get home, as a, I'm on my way home, I'm going to be, I have a plan. How do you do it? So I've done that so many times. At an event, and then I get home, and I have every reason on why I can't. I need to clean my house. I need to organize. My dog ate my homework. How did I stop losing my passion? I stopped leaving, or I stopped. Or how did I stop? How did I keep my passion? I'm sorry. I stopped leaving my note in my book. The notebooks that you guys are writing in or that you, on our meetings that you write in, you set it down, you don't pick it back up. I kept those notes. Started making a checklist. Now, I love checklists. It is so satisfying, like mowing the lawn. You see the lines or in vacuuming? I love checklists. And so I started making checklists and I set my goals. Now, it is, and we've tried to drill this in everyone's head, and I didn't, it didn't click until really a couple months ago. But it's right, I don't want a pink Cadillac, which I do. I set my goal in the end, I am going to recruit five people this month. I am going to sell a thousand dollars this month. So it can't be an empty goal, or I don't know if that's the right word, but, and then I, you know what? I wrote it down. I wrote down my takeaways. You know how I've heard that when you're on a diet, if you put like a picture of your big butt on the fridge, that when you, every time you open the fridge, you're like, oh no, I don't want to look like that. I'm on a diet. So you put your takeaways all over um, your your goals. So you see the um, affirmations. And so you have to see it every day. Um, I remember one time I was doing on work with women. And I'm part, I was part, and my confidence was, was gone and now that like a lot of people it's really hard to believe that I don't have confidence sometimes because I'm Amanda Wrecking Ball Holman 
But guess what? I don't have those every good day. So I sat there thinking about all the eye rolls I was going to get and those. And actually, all the time I spent was looking super cute. And how nobody was going to see it because I was not getting out of this freaking car. And so I called my brother. His name is Cody Bugs. His name is Cody. And he's about 6'9", 250 pounds. He works for, you know, the, the city. He's just this beast. And he's a thousand friends. Like, everybody loves Cody. And I said, okay, Cody, I need, I, need a, I need a favor. Can you call a bunch of your friends and help me set up a party? Now, he owns his own business. He works for the city. He's a husband. He has three children. And he put, why are you? Why are you calling? And I told him I lost my confidence, and he started laughing. <laughs> it's hard, like a her her her. I'm like, okay, I am the funniest person on earth, but I didn't just say anything funny. So once he stopped laughing, he said, "Shut the f up." We cuss a lot to each other, and I was like, "What?" He's like, "You are stupid. You are the strongest woman I know. You went through a horrible divorce." You have been addicted. You've done more than any woman I know. So can you go, so, and you can't walk your lazy butt in and say whatever the F you guys say. So shut up. And he hung up on me. I sat there thinking about what he said. And I thought, well, he ain't wrong. I'm pretty awesome and so I went in and I did honor and work with them that day how many of you have cleaned your office and hit like cleaned out your office from all of your Mary Kay stuff and hid it in a closet I have I'm talking about I took down every stash I got the things I earned the presents I've received from you guys I wanted a ninja kick my computer and I cried the entire time now, what you, when I think about that, it, it took me about an hour, probably, you know, when I could have been watching a Mary Kay video or something, you know, motivating myself instead of having a pity party. Now, the funniest part about this is I knew I had a Zoom with Emily. And I knew I was going to tell her I was quitting. I was done. I was a self-director. I'm quitting. I'm done. So I set my camera where she couldn't really see anything in the back. She's very, like, she can see things. Like, she watches. She's like, where's that crown I gave you? So I knew I was going to tell her, so I set my camera and my background, so I told her, look, I don't know what to do. I called everyone I know. Ah, does anybody know what that means, cap of a 20-year-old? Cap your light, that's a lie. So a little fun fact for you guys. So when someone tells me, when one of my consultants tell me, I called everyone I know, cap, bull crap. So I want everyone to know no one wants to work with me. I've done everything. No, my family won't support me. She asked me, have you tried this, this, this? All my answers was no. Like I said to her, yeah. So all those notes that I had wrote and all the things I'd learned and all the inspiration I've had were stuck under my notebooks right underneath my desk. How do you know when you do write something down it doesn't magically give you leads <laughs> or it doesn't magically give you party so she let me have my pity party and then she said where's amanda wrecking ball home that i know now i got that name because i when i finished the iq i did it in two months and i came out like a wrecking ball and i tell you what i did a cry she actually didn't even know i was going to submit for the iq and she was at a bridal fair and i blown up her phone i'm like for me I'm her favorite I mean that's in my head she's never told me that but I was like she, you know, I'm like I need her to check the numbers I need you to check the numbers so that was the answer I'm sure she thought I was in a car wreck like what was she gonna do three hours away you know and she ended up like check the numbers check the numbers she's like what I'm like I submit tomorrow last day of the IQ what she said just check I'm a brown fair Anyway, he looks like I did the IQ. So where is my Amanda Rector Mohammed? Do you see 140 faces in one month when you were in the IQ? I've seen 140 faces in one month. 
So she says to me, you had your pity party. Now, what are you going to do? Well, this time I loved honor. And I still like honoring working women. That day, instead of cleaning out my office or whatever, I went and did honoring working women. I've seen 75 faces that day. I did not give up. So my point is whether you need to be cussed out by your brother, call your best friend, your mom, your Mary Kay sister, your daughter, or even your dentist. You need that person to remind you who you forgot you were and why you love Mary Kay and your confidence and the joys you have. Now, what, now I'm going to switch a little bit just because of the national area and why it's so important. So besides the confidence that we're getting, making extra cash, getting to be queen of everything, um, we get to be the family fathers. We're on can you imagine? I, I am imagining it. We're building a national area, and no matter what level you want to be at, we need all of you. Everyone in this room, we need. We need leaders. We need the poster women to stand up behind what they said they're going to do. We need directors and cars and step it up. That would be me. Oh, just like I'm stepping it up. So what does national area actually mean to me? It's an honor. True honor. Can you imagine? I can't, I can't stop saying that. It's bigger than myself. We get to make up our own fall advances, which is so awesome. We're not lost, and I don't mean to say this negatively, we're not lost in like the Mary Kay world. I met a, a sales director who was in the Mary Kay, what is it called? A, just the Mary Kay national area. And she comes to all of our things because they don't do that. There's, there's just so many that don't have national uh, leaders, sales directors, or national. Mm -hmm. Remember the Vocker, um, Emily put and asked everybody, what would be your thing if we became a national? And we had, you know, we had the people wanting to do the bakery. Well, our chat just made me think about Kate because she's always our caterer. But so those things we need. And mainly the K of America, Mary Kay legacy. We deserve it. We've worked hard. We've tried hard. We've partied hard. So if you don't think that we have ever, or that any of us have not changed our lives, I just want to tell you one story about a consultant. Some of you have heard this story. We had a consultant, and her name was Marla. My mom, Anna, recruited her. Mom calls me one day and says to me, Amanda, this girl named Marla wants to sign up, but she's terminally ill and I feel like I'm taking advantage of her. And I told her, it's not your choice. It's not our choice to deny someone or not tell them about the opportunities. Late last year, she was put on hospice. And her thing was is that she had used Mary Kay her entire life and wanted her last year to be a Mary Kay consultant. Last year, she was put on hospice, and um, late last year. So, she, so Marla actually signed up on March 29th of last year, and then she was put on hospice pretty quick. We did a kickoff party, which was super fun. Um, in February of this year, called mom. You now, she's now really declined. And said, I need to place an order, but I can't remember how. The so mom helps her put in her order. And they, on March, no, it had to be it three days before mom went over and took Marla, helped her with her makeup. And her daughter, everybody was there. You know, her daughter had said she wore her Mary Kay makeup every day. She still did it. And promised that she would be put in Mary Kay makeup. So on March 4th, Marla became active. So that was the day. So Marla had went inactive. It didn't mean she wasn't a beauty consultant. She just went inactive just as bringing new people. Um, on March 4th, she put in an act. She became an active Mary Kay beauty consultant. And that's the day, actually. Two to three days later, mom went over there. On March 15th, Marla passed away. 
of the Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, which was what her dream was for her last year living. So if mom, Anna, had not told someone, told her about the opportunity, she would have not had her dream. She wore her Mary Kay makeup and we changed her life. And she loved all of you guys. She was on a couple of meetings. So the people that got to meet her, it was an honor, all of you. And it was on our friend. So now it is, um, I've had, I'm, I'm running out of time, I just don't want to. Okay. So it's time right now and we need to move you guys. So just imagine, don't just dream, write it down. Hang on to the women that you recruited or you helped. Hang on to the $500 parties that you had. And my, stop hanging on to the nose, the eye rolls, the, is that Mary Kay, is she alive? I didn't even know it was around. Because here's my question to you. Are you going to be on stage with us when we debut the national? Or are you going to be sitting on the sidelines hearing it through this great vibe? that you just it is with regret. Are you going to be on stage with us? Are you online, on sideline with regret? Perfectly. What do you want to be? On stage or sitting in the corner with regret? And so that it's very important that you make that choice when you stand behind what you say. And you guys, look at us. Look at what we're ready. I'm ready. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for coming um, and listening to me ramble a little bit. And um, so, yeah.